go. There we are. Back at the game. With a new city, because my last one was just uh, not working out anymore. I made too many mistakes and I wanted to restart now that I know what I'm doing, you know. And let's see, where do I want to start? Looks like this uh, looks like an alpine meadow map to me. As I picked uh, random here. So oh, let's see, there's blueberries, herbs, gold. Okay. Willow, bird's nest, blueberry. So these two lakes here look pretty appealing, don't they? But where do I want to place down my town center, I might ask? So, here in the center of everything, hey? In the middle of those lakes? Hmm. Or closer to the mountains? What about this place here? There's plenty of stone and wood. There's one lake, and if we get into that, go into that direction, there's even more lakes. So, there's some iron here, and there's sand there. Well, yep, yeah, I do like this position there. Bird's nest, hawthorn, okay. So, either here, or there. So, there's a lot of resource here, so I'd say I'll go here. I just don't want to be that far away from the resources. Wild Heine Games, hi there. And, yeah, I'm happy to hear that. I really love RimWorld, and it's really always a, a big pleasure for me to hear that. I've been able to help getting people into that game because RimWorld is just something very, very special to me, you know. That's that's awesome to hear, man. There's anything you need to uh, to know or any other questions, a, a certain guide you want to see for a certain topic, just let me know. Hey, Hjorin, welcome back, man. Happy to see you. So, let's see. We have... A lot of uh, trees here. Man, it's, uh, it's full of trees, this place. I bet we're going to have a hard time um, getting everything uh, built here. So... Let's see, we'll have our food gathering into that direction, so I'd say we're going to make our living more into that direction, so... Oh. Well, the well goes there. Urin, hi there, so happy to see ya. Okay, so... I want... At least one forager shack? so much stuff in the radius there so we're going to slap that down here I'd say and harvest me some some stuff here that's what I've been expecting okay so I want the forager prioritized and and the town center. The well ain't that important. I mean on the bright side we're going to get a lot of resource here. <laughs> yeah. I gotta say, this game looks so much like uh, Grim Dawn in its details. Like when you're getting really close to everything, this looks like you got a uh, a, a editor with the game slapped on top of itself, like a Grim Dawn editor with a survival game on top of it. 
I love it. Alright, so we got the town center done. Foragers almost done too. And then we'll have to do some planning afterwards. But for now, I want to build the stuff that'll yield me food. Food is really, really important. Water as well. People die without water, obviously. Okay, we've got these. So, next thing, I want the housing they are asking for. So, let's see if I can already foresee a couple of things. This looks like here is going to be the, the, the forager's place. Here I see a clay deposit. Herbs. Clay there. Iron ore there. So... Let's consider industry into, into this direction. So it'd be actually quite a smart thing to put our first housing into this region here. Okay. I just want to make sure that the housing is basically in between the, the areas where we want to work. Because, you know, if the houses are too far away for your people, they also have a problem. So... Let's see. Oh, predator sighted. Kill the wolf. Dark pile on him. Alrighty, got it. Good stuff. Throw a lie there. Welcome back. Happy to see you. Okay, so after the shelters have been built, let's see what we're going to do afterwards. A firewood splitter looks uh, important, but we we do have a pretty good start so far. Okay. House number two. Wow, this place is so full of trees. I love this map already, kind of. Okay, but what I didn't find here at all was game. There seems to be no game here whatsoever. So the next thing that I want to do is a fisher's hut then. Here, fishing shack. So... Can I flatten that terrain somehow? Let's see. I hope that'll allow me to build the, the Fisher's Hut there. The other thing we're going to set on up here. Let's see. make sure we have another the slope's too steep everywhere that's really an issue let's see can i build this now yep i can wonderful i hope that i can uh increase the uh radius afterwards and the next thing we're going to need is the firewood splitter. Let's bring this bad boy up there. This is farthest frontier. This is uh, a pretty new um, colony survival simulator. So if you like Grimworld, this game might be up your alley as well. I like to call it a uh, upgraded uh, version of. Um, of Banished whenever uh, somebody asks me. If you know the game Banished, this is basically um, its spiritual successor, so to say. In my humble opinion, at least. Yeah. People want to join. I oh, know, I know. 
How's the situation here? We have nine laborers right now, so... Oops. Okay, so there's the fire with splitter. But I absolutely want another forager's shack here. Maybe not there. Maybe down here, huh? Okay. So it turns out on this map, I really need to flatten a lot of terrain to make things work. I like that, actually. Okay, so let's build the stockyard. Somewhere around here. Okay, well, let's hope it'll work out. I thought we flattened that place. <laughs> Seems like it didn't work out as, as well as I wanted it to. Well, okay, one thing at a time. I mean, with all those trees, it's really hard to see anything. Oh, they fixed the overly loud uh, user interface thingies. Awesome. With my last stream, it was ridiculously loud. Definitely want to set up more housing here. Let's make sure they are not too close together. It's really important. But also not too far away. Northern Saw, I there. Yeah, the, the holiday was really awesome. Just like every holiday too short and when you come back home it's always the same you uh, I, I'm struggling to get back into my uh, usual daily routine if you know what I mean but besides that I'm really happy to be back and uh, yeah just camping outside in nature was an awesome experience like it always is So, let's place down some roads. Go. And now, resource production. Let's come up with the salt pit. Slope too steep again, man. Let's flatten that. Alright, so getting, uh, making ourselves home here is quite the hard ordeal, but I'm surprised about that, you know. Let's see. Let's put up a smokehouse in between here. What's that actually? Again? Ah, oh, yeah, the forager. I want that smokehouse here. Let's build some extra road there. Well, I gotta say, Mr. Dio, I, I, I do understand where you're coming from, but 
I I'm not the kind of guy who call who who does this uh, statement easily. You know, a lot of people were comparing other games to Banished or asking me like if it was comparable, and I was actually never really willing to say yes. It's actually like that, but with this one, it has the same kind of um, love for detail. You know. You have the you have very comparable problems, villagers' diseases, fire spreading, and uh, yeah, I think it's uh, as close as it gets. That's all I can say, or as close as it got. Well, the only thing I know for sure, Mister Dio, is one thing: the guys behind this game are were behind one of the more, most successful new ARPGs in the last couple of years, Grimdon. And, uh, well, judging from what I saw from these developers, they, they have my trust, you know. They did show me that they can make really, really awesome games, or an awesome game already. Although, it's a genre switch. That's why I'm personally a little bit, um, doubtful. Predator sighted! Another wolf, isn't it? Yeah. I'm a little bit doubtful about that, but you know. We'll see about that, you know? Let's just leave it like that. So. Seven people. Mm, not that close before winter. Sorry. Not right before it goes into winter, guys. So, two new villagers immigrated. Because that's the thing, if you have housing, new people will come to your city. I didn't know about uh, the that Pjorn, but it does make perfectly sense and uh, does explain to me a lot why um, I I made the mistake that Grim Dawn was from the same people that did Titan Quest, and it also makes sense that ever since Grim Dawn has been released, all the new stuff from Titan Quest is like not that well received by the community. Does it does make it all perfect sense? Okay, so, well, we have four months of food available. Not exactly much, but, uh... We'll see about that. But the fishers are still working during winter. Who's not working during winter are the foragers, of course. I do know that, but... Uh... Well, worst case, somebody will starve. So you see all those resources that are grayed out here. That's a depiction that they are not providing resource right now. And if they are colorful like this one here... Then they are still providing. Okay, so I got the saw pit. I got another forager shack. Let's see what we can do for storage sake. A root cellar and a warehouse. So I want the warehouse closer to the town center. And I want the root cellar in that vicinity there as well. So we'll need a tad bit more stone. This one does have potential, you agree? Yeah, that's true. But, you know, I, I, I totally hear where you're coming from. There's been so many uh, games that tried to fill into a, sort, into a similar niche. And they, they just didn't uh, kick it so far. 
Nope, I need to ban something. Give me a sec. Er, oh, the game doesn't mute anymore when you tap out of it. Awesome. Pixis! Nice! <laughs> yeah, Mr. Studio. You can't always expect from me uh, from my side, honestly. I'm not one of those content creators that sugarcoat crap only because the uh, developers told me to make some advertisement for them. Basically, the 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 if you don't see a game on my channel, that's usually a statement on its own. And sometimes I have a very quirky taste, and I do like games that other people just outright despise. I know that. But most of the time, I try to be... I, I try to avoid that. Yay, it's new! You have to... I, I hate that. <laughs> That's why I skip out on a lot of new titles as well. Yes, you know, it has to convince me. Yes, I've played some Anno, but uh, not too much. Mostly because that was during a phase where I uh, basically had almost little to no time for gaming and um, also little to no money for gaming and so it came down that the uh, Anno series uh, went past me most of it at least so when I when I came into it it was actually already pretty outdated and uh, it didn't uh, it didn't click for me I was totally able to see that this once was a great game, so to say, but nowadays it just uh, just didn't click anymore. And then the Ubisoft problem came up. The longer uh, the franchise went, it was Ubisoft, wasn't it? Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but, you know, Ubisoft, or whatever devs it were behind that, solely strangled the, the franchise to death, at least in my humble opinion. And, yeah. I do know that during my teenage years, I think I have had a pirated version from somebody, but I quickly hated all the pirated versions because, you know, they're just, they are just not working. It's always the same. Okay. So let's hope our dudes are able to survive now. I mean, we are living off of uh, refillable or, or restocking resources, so to say. Wildmender. I haven't even heard that title for it. Ubisoft. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ubisoft. They killed Heroes of Might and Magic. And a lot of other good franchises fell victim to these... Uh, Weirdos. <laughs> I just like that. You know? I've been talking to my wife yesterday about that, and uh, I personally feel like we are also seeing kind of a paradigm shift in game, in, in game development in, in general. Because, uh, you know... The last 20 years or so were a uh, time where the gaming uh, where the gaming industry started to troll the players more and more and uh, tried to wrench out the dollars to hide out of the out of the games and uh, the games suffered triple A titles really didn't uh, or triple A companies didn't really um, hold up what they were promising anymore and now in the 2020s we have this weird situation where 90% of the good games come from indie companies and 90% of the bad games okay that's a total over exaggeration but like most triple a title titles suck at least for my personal taste oh no again stupid chat bots Sorry for the nuisance, my friends.
Yeah, the DLC, the DLC policy that that's only the cherry on the on the top of the of the crap pie in it. That's true. The whole DLC policy stinks. Although, on the other hand, I must say th there's the other problem that developing good games costs a lot of money. And you can't come up for free with that. So this is always the issue. I do support well-made DLC policies. No problem. Especially if devs are that cool that they either give a part of the content for free for everybody. Or bundle up DLCs after a while and sell them, sell them cheaper or something like that. You know, you don't have to make marketing stink. It's uh, basically your decision as a company if you make if you make it stink or not. So here we go, another predator. Mm. That's it, isn't it? Yeah. Oh no. So we've been attacked by the wolf. That far out in the open that I don't think that this poor fella has any chance of survival there. He doesn't seem to die immediately, though. Oh, he is dead. Or is he? So let's see. Can we... Yeah, more people want to join. I think he's dead. So let's uh, set up a little bit of a graveyard here. Cool. There goes... Yeah, stupid war, man. Ostriff is a title that I uh, only saw passing by. And yeah, you are. I totally agree. The DLC strat, like uh, the one with Grim Dawn, where you get a lot, a big chunk of of content and something like that. That's a good one. Okay, they die after a while, but it didn't have a healer. I'm sorry. Okay. And neutrality. That's that's exactly a good point there. A us gamers, we have changed. We we have a wildly different, uh, not taste, but we have different uh, needs nowadays for a game. We, it's not the same like in the 90s anymore, you know? I, I'm one of that lucky people that uh, I, I have seen a, a lot of the gaming development since the 90s because my dad was cool enough not to block me out of uh, gaming even while i was only uh, four or five years old i had direct access so i look back uh, at 30 years of development there and uh, you know i know very well when i was a kid it was all about you get a patch for a game once a year or something like that and you had then you had really hard then you had a really hard time to to grab that patch and the like. It was really like that. Nowadays we're basically pampered, and uh, we we get so much for free, and we're still unhappy. Andreas, hi there. Happy to see you. What I'm trying to say with my rambling here is that, um. I think the the devs nowadays don't have it easy either, you know. That's what I was trying to say. So the compost yard also very important because we we have to take care of our crap, actually. And let's see what will we do here. Food production wise, I feel like we're well set. The tannery, well, I don't have any hunting yet going on. Um. I want to start on out with a Fletcher, because I like it when my peeps have bows and, uh, you know. I think the death of a couple of people could have been avoided with bows, so let's see. 
also, if we ever happen to get attacked, it'll be very helpful to have weapons too. And, uh, no, as soon as we will get attacked, I should rather say. It's not an if, it's a when. Oh, nice! I can draw a street between those buildings. It's cool. Yeah, those uh, demo events, I gotta say, I rarely have the time to skim through the things because, you know, there's just so many things. There's just, you know, you do, you wouldn't want to see my work backlog these days. You know, there's just so much stuff I don't even find time to to work with, to review, to play. It's a tragedy, but I can't help it. Okay, so we have now the Fletcher going on. How much idle work, uh, idle workers do I have? Well, not that many. Let's build a bit more housing here. And with a bit, I mean a lot. And uh, we're going to, let's see. How's the fertility here? Do I even have some fertile soil there? Well. This is a pretty fertile corner, so let's see. Invalid location. Oh no, it's just uh, that's not large enough. So we're going to go for. So they have to be five in one angle. Oh, that sucks. I hope the devs rework that. Bothers me. Because that means whenever... Um... So here I cannot draw another uh, another um, farm. Because I am one grid off. Ah, nice. Yeah, Splat Cat has a really, really nice uh, selection of games, too. This guy has a very similar taste to mine, that's all I can say. Because <laughs> I see always games that I would like or already have featured on my channel, on his uh, on his channel. It's like the bigger version of me. I don't like to see it as competition. It's always nice to have variety. Okay, we got six, six months of food, and, uh... Well... Gaming surely was different there, Mr. Dio. For me, um, classic RPGs, the turn-based RPGs and the classic RPGs were... were the stuff of the days back when, you know? Low, come on, we're fine. So we need more shelters and a bit more resources, but beyond that, we're well set. Yeah, we just uh, need the extra people there. Okay. So, then we'll do it like that. Let's see, maybe I can't overwrite that. Huh, do they? I want to try that. This looks like, yeah, they're just ignoring the road and uh, use that. That. Cool. There's a lot of little things that really impress me here. <laughs> happens for it happens. Well, 
I gotta say to you, that sounds like uh, a lot more risk for diabetes and a lot less risk for a heart, uh, for a heart attack. <laughs> okay, so we have that little uh, village center here. And now the the most important part is I gotta get rid of uh, all, the, all those trees. In it. But we have so much work to be done to get done. No, it still does uh, mute the game when I uh, when I tap out. That was wishful thinking. Damn. Must have worked out before, because just because I uh, went on the second uh, monitor or something like that. Okay, so how do my stockpiles work out here? Resources and storage. Here. This is one of the things I really love about this game. Can here check out how much storage space you have left in your city. So. All right. I'm kind of like feeling a little bit jealous about uh, alien wear. Alien wear is so damn costly. Good stuff, but wow, so costly. So we are producing smoke fish. Very helpful at this point. And let's do some exploration here. And I hope that this year my people will manage to get 30 villagers into the city. That would be a big, big step forward. So... Also these things, check this out. Whenever you select one building of a type, you see all the all the influence circles circles of the other buildings. These are little things that some games don't even have included in their full releases. Good stuff. So we're going to slap down another forager there. I know that I'm missing out on a few things there, but it doesn't really matter that much. All I can say so far is that this uh, game turns into one of my favorite new, uh, into one of my favorite city builder games that I've been uh, touching so far. Well, you played D and D. That's a fine thing. I, uh, I'm still into pen and paper role play stuff. Totally my world. I love storytelling. I, I, I am, uh, I, I'm basically a, a natural. I, I'm always DMing, you know. So we have our first crop field. So let's plant. Uh, Let's plant beans and uh, that together. Yeah, whatever. We cannot configure that right now. So let's see. We would need to change the soil mixture here. That's okay. Well, okay, I don't like that. We're just going to make this uh, place like that. Day of the Tentacle! Oh man, Day of the Tentacle was so awesome. Uh, it was like 
Maniac Mansion was already a a, 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 a really, really well-made game. But Day of the Tentacle just amped that up and uh, made it even better. Certainly one, in my opinion, one of the best uh, games in that genre that has been ever made. Not to mention the good old uh, Monkey Island and uh, all, um, things and the like. So, the compost yard. The compost yard does make the area extremely undesirable. Look at that. Ooh. It, it, it really, it really, everybody hates that. Why? Because we collect our feces there. So this place stinks. Literally. And therefore, it has to be somewhere in the vicinity of... Uh, of our housing, so not too far away from that, but also not too close. I, I gotta say, what's really, really nasty about this uh, map here is the is the terrain. Really a problem for us there. All right, mm, I love it. We have. Fields. All right, let's just hope that I'll be able to to get the feces collector in there. Camera and I there, thank you so much for your kind words. It really means a lot to me. I'm just following my passion. Glad that you enjoy it. Yeah, I, I gotta say, Maniac Mansion was one of those games that I didn't really play myself. I just uh, read the the walkthroughs and the solution to uh, catch up with the story. Because just like like for my for for me for and I, I always uh, I also wasn't uh, old enough to fully grasp what uh, what's going on there. It's been one of the most complex games. I mean, not as horrible as Zack McCracken where. You literally got like uh, parts like, "Hey, you forgot to pick up an item at the beginning of the game." Now, twenty hours later, you have to restart because we need that. I I really dislike that kind of game design, but I mean, back in the day, game design wasn't uh, as developed as nowadays. But we are really getting very very sidetracked, aren't we? So. That's one part I, I really do love about this game a lot. Look at this farm. It's gorgeous, isn't it? So. We've harvested some turnips. Let's. And this goes on with practically every element of this game. And while the the houses look very very similar yeah they are the same they got the same skins i really hope that this is something we're going to see a change in the uh, newer versions that you actually have different skins for your uh, for your houses that would be awesome okay the feces collector the dung man Still too steep. No, we were able to place it down here. Cool. Terrain flattening in these areas is a pain. Mostly because you have a hard time seeing below the trees. So that would be another really, really good thing. Village is stricken with scurvy. Yeah, well, fruits and vegetables. I thought, or. Our food supplies weren't that bad. So. Well, we have nuts. Okay. A building is on fire. Village you cured. I guess he ate some nuts and that it was fine. Yeah, the farming part of this game is one of the one of the best things that it had done so far. As somebody who's uh, who's uh, who has his own uh, field, small one, allotment uh, garden, this is very realistic. This is very very realistic. 
And uh, I find it very important that games show us way more realistically that you are not planting the same thing on the same field unless it, it's plants that synergize well with each other. Unless that's, if that's not the case, you will always plant something different because you'll, it'll, it won't work otherwise. Yeah, scurvy was the sailor's disease. Um, it was basically the sailor's disease, you know. Oh, we have a bear. Okay. Um, you mentioned lemons, but did you know, as German, I'll have to, uh, I have to mention sauerkraut. That's been one thing, too. It's basically a uh, sour pickle to... Uh... Ugh, what kind of cabbage is it? I, I forgot it. Stupid bear! I'll show you one day. Yo guys, you uh, can back to your you can get back to your business. Yeah. Identifying diseases as what they were, what they are, was not what was not necessarily the biggest uh, strength of the people way back when. All right, one more villager, and then we can upgrade that thing. All right, so this field here, we're going to plant clover in this time and wheat in that time. Clover and wheat go well together because the clover doesn't mind the frost. And, uh, I mean, it doesn't make sense that I'm doing this because I'm doing basically the same every year, but if I don't do that, the game uh, tells me that I have to configure the remaining years. And you don't get this uh, pop-up rid of, or you don't get rid of this pop-up. That explore flack is nonsense. But I really feel like I want to explore. So there's some sand here. Nice. Okay. Oh, there's another, uh, another lake. <laughs> All right, Thorin. Have a good one. Catch you later, I hope. Oh, come on. Give me person 30. Man. Oh, everybody's super happy. Nice. Okay. So I got that. I still haven't found any game that's bothering me the most these days. I really want to set up a hunter for leather. The like. But so far, that didn't work out, eh? So. Take that. All right, we got it, finally. So, the upgrade costs are a joke by now. Dennis, hi there, and thank you so much. I do what I can to help you guys and uh, make well, well comprehensible guides. 
always a pleasure to be appreciated. Bar ah, Bela, hi there. So happy to see you, man. So, it's your birthday on Monday. Nice to hear that. Hope you have great plans. So, I want to have... Not rye, I want flax here. So, flax has a minus two uh, thingy there. So, let's see. You could plant some peas. On top of that. And they are very, very frost tolerant too. Nice. So the peas give the uh, give back the fertility. And uh, let's do something like that. And third year. There we go. Sevens, have a great weekend too, and so kind of you to stop by just to say something like that. Thanks. So many nice people stopping on by today. Okay, so we will have the town center upgraded in no time. wild wild uh, fields there and of course for this game I'm planning to do some content uh, some informational content as well I guess you guys already figured okay oh yeah here comes the tier 2 town hall things only get more complicated from here but uh, we're not going to starve anytime too soon, so. Let's do one thing, though. Let's see. Um, defenses. So, a lookout tower has a monthly cost of five. Ow! That's costly. Damn. Can't afford that. So. Now it's the time that we'll have to work with decorations to increase the desirability of our, of our buildings. So let's start on out with a small park. And a shrine, but I don't have the necessary gold for that. Okay. Bit of a plaza building there, although the plazas are for me just placeholders. To century. Okay. Uncool. Um, this is uh, basically this uh, two, both at once, uh, Bela. It is a a. a colony builder with survival elements so you have to take care as you see here not only about the the well-being of your people um with food and uh, shelter they also get ill you need to take care of their needs but you also get attacked and raided so it has uh, some rts and tower defense uh, elements in it as well so i don't know how this will look like in the long run but uh considering that this is just the uh, very earliest access version of that game. I'm impressed so far. I'm really, I'm really, really impressed, and I'm not easily impressed when it comes down to to stuff like that, you know. So, uh, yeah, of course it's uh, it's too steep here again. Okay. Hi there, are you Tundra? Yeah, it's, uh, I, I didn't think that it would be that good, but I had some anticipations because Create Entertainment is the, is the developer behind that, and so far, if it, 
if, if there's great entertainment on the label, it usually is a great game. So, that's uh, as far as things went for me. So, we can also now build the Arborist, but I'll need clay for that. So, let's see. Um, I can build the clay pit, but I am lacking the wagon shop. Okay. So, apiaries, yeah, I should definitely consider that as well, because it's really not much more. Um, the weaver, yeah, the weaver is extremely important for us. So, let's set up the weaver's workshop here. I'm slowly killing off my uh, blueberry bush supplies and the like. Okay, I don't want to build here now. Let's cancel that. And instead build it over on the other side of the road, where there's no resource getting killed. And the fun lies in the realism here. So you, you see here all these icons here, the blueberries, and the, there's lots of different food that's growing during different times of the year. So um, one of the challenges here is also at the beginning of the game to get a uh, year-round supply of things. And there's just a lot of thing, a lot of uh, little things that make me extremely happy here. So we don't have the amount of planks that I would like to see. So let's put up more people onto the saw pit then. So we get more planks. And what I'm doing here, by the way, is supposed to be a new uh, new Let's Play series, so I don't want to ditch this place here anytime too soon. So the slope is too steep at, this, at all these points, but when I get that close, I'm already killing off the desirability of my, uh, off of my um, residential areas. Damn. Gotta say, this is the, the big hidden challenge behind this uh, this map so far. All that stuff that you need to flatten here to uh, to get on up there. Okay. The compost yard, by the way, is extremely important. Without it, your the poop of your people will uh, stockpile, and uh, you you don't want your the poop of your people to stockpile. They they really get angry when that happens. Okay. Impending blizzard. So. They will need more firewood. We have lots of food in our stockpiles. I'm not afraid. Okay. So we're going to have a weaver here. We already have some flax. Alright. Now, let's see, um, not resources, or, well, yes, resources. So, let's see, compost yard, basket shop, requires, I have that stuff. Whatever it is, I know that I have it. Let's make ourselves some baskets as well, because that really does help. I got the Fletcher. Yeah, the cobbler shop. I I still haven't found any game bothering me a lot. So we can now bring up a healer's house with insane monthly costs. Trading posts, I want that. Yeah. So the areas where I can build are really not too many. So dear traders, find yourself in right next to the place where we decompose our feces. Enjoy your stay. It's gonna smell a little bit funny. <laughs> Victorian London, they used to pour it out of the windows. <laughs> 
that was uh, that that's by far one of the most stupid things you can do with your feces because that's practically inviting all manner of different um problematic uh, things into into your city by just pouring your crap on uh, out of the window Whoa, 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 whoa. Alright. You fools. That one time when you're uh, busy doing something else, two people get killed immediately. El stupido. Alrighty. But the immigration gets... Let's see, people... So, yeah. Let's see. That's really bothering me, though. I'm using the flatten tool, and it doesn't really do anything. Sucks pretty hard to me. I didn't want that uh, slight curvature there, but whatever. It is now as it is. The cursor was drunk. So here's the windmill. Barn. Nice. And let's bring up the bakery right next to that. And yeah, now we'll have to uh, wait until the swap pit is uh, working out. So right now, if there's somebody dying, the swap pit doesn't uh, automatically restack the worker. Or if a, if a worker does die, the building doesn't automatically... Uh, Fill in the new worker. So, I'll set up a fissure there. I know it's pretty far away, but we're uh, now getting access to new transportation methods. And our city does need, need more food, after all. So, speaking about food, um, resources and storage, let's see. So, our stockyards are... The root cellar is slowly filling up. Nice. Okay. Yay! Clothing! Big step forward. Big, big step forward. So, yeah. Now we'll have to wait until the planks have been cut. Speed 3 doesn't feel fast enough for the game, though. I mean, I am usually always that kind of an impatient person in games like these, but at the same time, I gotta say, I don't want to issue any further uh, commands now. And let's bring up some extra builders here. That should work. Um, I don't want to issue that many extra commands because, you know, it, it won't change anything. Eight buildings on fire. Right next to the well, luckily enough. So. Let's see. Armory, charcoal kiln, soap shop, candle shop. Yeah. 
first thing that I want to finish is the wagon shop. But before I can do that, all the other projects that I've issued have, bit, have to be finished first. And that's more important for now. But things are looking uh, quite fine so far. We have every year way more food than we actually need. So the um, extra people we need will be no problem whatsoever. And uh, yeah. The only issue there is that my building projects take too long for my taste. So the basket shop. Baskets are pretty cool because baskets increase the uh, carrying capacity of your people. And um, let's see. Yeah, I do have a lot of willow because we basically harvest that here every year from the, from the different lakes. It would be awesome if we'd get a, uh, a, a audio notification about that. Alright. There we go. Oh, it does open up. This is uh, just unexplored area. It does have borders. This is a medium-sized map, for example, on this one. But uh, you can explore it for quite a while. Sadly, there is still no map or anything like that. I would uh, I would kill for a map. But uh, yeah, one thing at a time. Another predator. They are a little bit hard to see, I think. What does the green arrow mean? Oh yeah, okay. you guys have already taken it. And uh, hi Arte. Sorry, I, I overlooked you. Sneaking in. So we have trade post now. Awesome. So let's see, what do I have a lot of? Wood, obviously. So let's transfer, let's say, 100 uh, locks of wood over to our trading post. And uh, let's also transport a bit of that grain into the trading post. It, the next time a trader comes by, I can only hope that uh, he's going to buy that stuff. Oh, look at that. I think there is the trader I've been waiting for. So let's see. Mm. He'd be buying honey, stone, iron, weapons, tools, and linen clothes. So, but none of the, the items that I'm transferring right now. He'd be also tra uh, selling herbs. Oh, you get even an indicator if that price is a good one or not. Nice. All right, cool. Like I said, a lot of different, a lot of little, little cool things in this game, you know. Alrighty, nice little mountain hamlet so far. So here, the grain processing is almost set up as well. There'll be bread! Alright. So they they finished the bakery before... Oh no. The windmill does need heavy tools. I forgot about that. Alright, so we're uh, unable to do anything before we have the heavy tools. is not buying this item. Alright. So I got that one wrong. Whatever. So, a couple of things that are still bothering me, for example, are that I don't get a proper notification when the merchant hits town, for example. 
I find that extremely uh, annoying. Because I feel like that's something that I'd really, really love to know about. Just like the uh, predator attacks that also happen to come a little bit out of nowhere. But early schmaxes, you know. So, a little garden trail. Why can't I build that down here? Oh, obstructed by building. So. Medium garden. Oh, a small garden, of course. Interesting that I suddenly can place down a second one. It's uh, being displayed as green here. Must have been the perspective, actually. Interesting. The more you know. So the the whole heavy tools thing has been sharply criticized already. A lot of people are unhappy because of that too. Hey, odds. <laughs> normal people. You call me a normal person? I don't know if I should feel flattered or threatened. Oh, but, I ha but I'm super happy that I was able to help you out and you appreciate it. To get me your arm. Just kidding, right? So, a school. A rat catcher. Oh. Oh. The barn. The arborist. Well... Let's start on out with the wagon shop. Where's that thing again? I bet it's storage. Wagon shop here. This is where transport wagons are being manufactured. Very important thing. So, what do we have here? A granary. Oh, yeah. Also, mucho, mucho importante. And uh, Coopers. Well, we don't have iron here. So. Let's wait for the... Let's wait for the uh, other buildings to be finished. And I'll have to wait until a merchant brings me some heavy tools, I think. Well, that's... Uh, that's very sad to hear, that's all I can say. <laughs> you know, content creators like me, we can need we can use all the help that we can get, that's all I wanna say. But I do understand that. Digital payments are a pain to set them up. Once you have set them up, they're pretty it's pretty cool and all, but until you have set it up, it's a pain. All right, year number six. We're still alive and kicking. Oh, there's some iron ore around there. Nice. So I find it very disturbing that four people here are not able to sustain the needs of my uh, of my city right now. Oh, there's a new trader. Bring me heavy tools. But I really feel like this game needs a little bit of a faster um, speed setting. Speed ain't feeling uh, fast enough there. So you, good sir, you are buying and selling logs, alright? But he's not selling anything I need, but he'd be selling flour. Hmm. Nice. So first off, uh, here, shut up and take my money, uh, my wood. So he would be buying soap. We will be buying 
a few sacks of flour, though. Let's say 100. And uh, these get into the little storage. I can't already tell. Once this game has everything uh, sorted out, it will be really, really awesome. It's already a lot of fun. But, uh... For example, I love how the trading here works. The fact that you don't get to uh, select what the trader needs every time. Really, I really like that. The only thing I dislike is that um, you need those heavy tools at some point, and I can't do anything without them, and that sucks, you know. Oh no, the firewood splitter's inventory is full. Do we actually have too much firewood? I don't see that as a real problem. That's why I'm not drawing faces like that. So, a small park. Is that finally enough to kick up the desirability large enough? No, because we already have the small park. Aha. Uh -huh. The large park, though. Good lord, this thing is huge. Just like the name implies. Um... Well, it's also 500 gold, so we're really not able to, f to finance that right now. Belda, the peddler, parting in 24 days, okay. So, well... Let's harvest some more trees over here. How long have I been making videos? This is now my third year. In, uh, in this job. This is year three. But things have been kicking off this year a lot. Like, uh, the visibility of the channel and all have, has uh, made huge progress. So we're going to relocate this there. More fish. But seriously, how can I be so unlucky with games? Game. There's nothing to hunt here. Amazing. Never had that much uh, that that much of a streak of bad luck so far. But whatever. Mm. I have the wagon shop, so. Transport wagons are now being produced. I'm really considering setting up a new saw pit. Because obviously it doesn't seem to be enough. Dirt road can be upgraded. Hmm. I see. Let's upgrade a few roads here. And I should now be able to build a play pit. Luckily, the clay pit doesn't uh, reduce the desirability of my uh, of my housing area. By the way, housing. How are we? I have eleven laborers open. Yeah, that seems to be okay. So everybody, that's where I'm going to end today's first episode of this new thing here. Let's see how far I'll play this little settlement. I thank everybody hanging around so much for your time and attention. Next time we're going to continue that. If this has been a video on demand for you, or if you're still hanging around and want to give me a helping hand, comments go down below. A thumbs up goes a long way, making this video more visible. And of course, consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. In the description box below, you'll find a link to my Patreon, which has been worked, reworked, and basically be a member and influence the content that I do. That's that's the gist of it. That's the new thing that I did. And the other thing, direct donations via PayPal are very, very welcome because, like I mentioned before, I can't live off of it yet thoroughly, completely, whatever, but my content will always be free. I'll never change anything about that, and therefore... Your help is muchly appreciated. Enough about the ads. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day. And uh, see you guys soon, I hope.